Two years after his wife's unexpected death, a renowned stage actor and director receives an offer to direct a production of Uncle Vanya at a theater festival in Hiroshima. There he meets a tantric young woman assigned by the festival to chauffeur him around in his beloved Red Saab 900. As the production premiere approaches, tensions mount amongst the cast and crew, not least between the director and a handsome TV star who shares an unwelcome connection to the director's late wife. This is Drive My Car on Night at the Movies on the Cross Border Interviews.妻です。僕たちは確かに僕が一番恐れていたのは音を失うことだった。今回は私たちの決まりでドライバーを用意します。というと彼女です。渡美咲です。僕はまだドライバーを君に頼むことにどうしてない。私が若い女だからですか。一ヶ月半の稽古と二週間の本番です。ずるい人だ。バイト。そこまで失礼。君はどうして広島に？実家の裏が山なんです。大雨で地滑りが起きて、母はその事故で亡くなったんです。お父さんって素敵じゃないですか、とても。君は好感が得てる。僕たちは同じ悲しみを共有してる。同じ女を愛したから。僕の人生と愛はどうしたらいい？生きていく他ないの。私の方がおじさんよりちょっと不幸かも
I want to thank you for your opinion, and I greatly appreciate the constructive feedback you've given about this movie. Now, for me, I'm, uh, I'm going to go a little bit on the opposite direction. I have said this numerous times on this show, and I'm going to say it one more time. Because you have three hours does not mean you need to take three hours to deliver a movie. I thought this was a long, drawn-out version of The Green Book. Now, for those who are thinking, it's not the, I know it's not the exact same. For those who are not watching this while you're listening to this, Michael is shaking his head quite vigorously at that statement. I was not a fan of the you tried to tell a story in this movie that you did not need to tell in some sense you you took a very short story and you inputted information into it that just wasn't there i did not like it i thought that the friendship between the chauffeur and the director was probably the best part. And if you would have just stayed to that friendship, I would have been happier and tell the story about the wife dying, understandable, because that's where that's how they meet. But I just think they should have stuck with one storyline instead of trying to expand it into which felt like five or six different storylines. I, I mean, I don't, I feel like if they had just stuck it with the car, then it's just Green Book in Japan. Agreed, but that's what the short story is about, though. They added... Sure. It, and the, and I, I, I understand it was up for best adapted screenplay, not best original screenplay. Yes. So they adapted it from this thing. And if you did the short story, it would have been a five-minute movie. Understandable. But I think when, when you take liberties like that, and this is what I had an issue with Brokeback Mountain. Brokeback Mountain was just a terrible movie, I found, because they Ang Lee tried to put more information and more storyline into it than it originally was. And that's what I found with this. But I mean, I don't know. I kind of disagree. I don't know if I. And that's I, why I, we I, have you on the show, so we sure. can disagree <laughs> with you. <laughs> So I, I just, I really like the idea of showcasing the other side. Cause I, I'm going to be honest, sitting in a car and doing a movie like that, it, it's just boring. And it's just not, it's not something that I necessarily want or need. I think having the aspect of him doing the onstage stuff and getting the healing with the man that, that his wife was sleeping with and having all of that growth Spoiler and alerts. having that, well, you know, from the jump. It's first 15 minute spoiler. Like it, it's just, I really felt it was just such a great movie. I, I just, I don't, and I like, I liked aspects of Brokeback Mountain. I, I think that an adapting, a, and then when you're adapting a short story for a feature length film, you have to adapt it and add things to it and change things to it. I don't wanna see something word for word on from the paper on screen necessarily, especially if it's a short story you're adapting. Because I think some of the short stories are great concepts that when you flush out on screen can be really fantastic uh, adapted stories for the screen. I think I think it for me, I, I wish it was more of a bottle movie. And for those who don't understand that reference, a bottle, a bottle movie, bottled show is when there's literally only one uh, see one uh, uh, set there isn't 12 and the best movie I've seen with that and I thought they were going to try and do this with this movie but they didn't was My Dinner with Andre that was probably one of my best my, one of my most favorite movies I've ever seen and I, I was hoping that I would see that with this movie and yet again I know that I've been wrong on many movies when people listen to this and we get feedback that I, I'm usually the wrong one and Michael's usually the one that's right. So I will I will be openly, I, I will take my hits if I need to, but I just, I thought it could have been better 
it just wasn't my favorite. And I, I found myself drifting in and out of the movie a lot. And the connection between the chauffeur and the director, that's, that's what the movie I wanted to see. And I found that it was just all over the place a lot of time. Whereas I disagree. I mean, I, I really liked it. I felt, and, and also as someone who does acting and does performing, like seeing that stage work being done, I felt was really fascinating to watch. I was hooked. I was enthralled. It was a movie perfectly tailored and made for me, I think. And in terms of what I, I do in my free time, in terms of what I like, in terms of the kind of things I gravitate towards, I think it was perfect for me. Granted, maybe not for you. Um, I, I feel like a lot of the international films nominated this year I really enjoyed and you did not. <laughs> so, which is fair, which is fair. And that's the thing. Not everybody's going to love every single movie. This one, I just happen to love. And so I'm giving it five stars. Wow. You're giving a, I'm going to give it a three. I'm not going to be harsh on it because I, I don't feel like that is the appropriate place to be harsh. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to be an uplifting uh, show and talk about the greats about the show and talk about the great things that happened in the, the movie. And I like the acting. I like the chauffeur. I love the chauffeur. I think she was probably one of my favorite characters in the entire thing. And I, I like the chemistry between her and the director. And I, I, I do appreciate that there were some moments of levity. There were some moments of uh, sorrow. There were some moments of uh, anger, but it was a good movie. I would highly recommend you watch it if you haven't. It was my odds on favorite to win best international foreign film the moment yeah. it came out. And uh, Michael and I had talked, if I'm not mistaken, if we actually talked about it on the Oscar shows, uh, because there was two of them. Um, this could have won best picture and I would have been happy. It with could that. have easily won best picture and I would have been very happy with that. I think the grand swell of support went to Coda in the last minute. So if Coda wasn't there, this could have been the other contender. So with that, unless you have anything else to add, Michael, because I do not want to cut you off. No, is there anything you want to add? No, I'm just making sure. I'm trying to be respectful right now. So with that, that is Drive My Car on Night at the Movies on the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown and Michael Nichols-Pate. Talk to you later, guys.